you know, like we'll talk about, and just my background, I'm from Massachusetts. Um, <coughs> I'd say Norbert, our ball's at 13.5 PSI. <laughs> so we're not doing anything different over there. Um, but my background and my mentor is Don Brown at Boston College for what it's worth. And um, this year, we just had a transition from a coaching standpoint. Um, our last head coach did like to film pre-practice. And we do all of our tackling pre-practice. So I have film for Boston College that we'll talk about, hopefully be able to answer questions. And if you have a question, just stop me. Uh, I do have a tendency, because I am from the East Coast, to talk really fast, and I use my hands a lot, so I'm going to try to keep one in the pocket, but uh, we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> you know, for what it's worth, it's just our approach, but it's not rocket science, right? I mean, this is, this is a, a want to. Um, I mean, our guys, and you know, we've been pretty fortunate. We have some, some good kids from the state of Wisconsin, Illinois, Minneapolis, all over the country, but um, our guys just want to get the guy down, and at the end of the day, and you guys are probably in the same boat, maybe having two-way starters, um, we just want to get the guy down. We don't, we don't care how he does it, obviously there are two things he can't do, and that's the horse collar and the face mask, but um, our secondary, our linebackers, our defensive line, if he just gets the guy down, I'm okay with it. You know, we were 6-4 and four this year, um, two of the big losses against North Central and also against Carroll, um, we had more than 15 missed tackles, so obviously you can see how that uh, that probably accounts from a bad defensive performance. Just three things that we talk about, right? Number one is just coming to balance. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you're not working drills, and we'll talk about that uh, later in the in, in the slides, but um, you know our buzzword for that is simply sync. And I think now, and you guys know your time's valuable. I mean, you may have coaches that. You know, work a full-time job, they can only be there for the two-hour practice and game day on Saturday or Friday nights. So if you have to explain tackling, like I'm explaining it to you in a 10 to 15 minute, um, you know, phrase and you have to break it down in front of them, I, I think you're losing time for more important things, right, with scheme. But, so for us, our guys, when I'd say, hey, Zach Markelson, you got to sink. He understands right away what I'm talking about and that really comes with coming about. And drills that we do, and I, I have some, some clips of that, but just to give you an idea, we do this every day, it's the first thing that we do. We get five lines, uh, we simply start on the goal line and we go to the 10, we have a coach at the 10, and they're gonna stay in a balanced stance. We talk about sync, we talk about Z in the knee, we talk about flexion in the ankles, the knees and the hips, okay? Obviously the idea and, you know, the form tackle is, is almost a lost art. I mean, you don't really ever tackle someone head on anymore. You know, but this first piece, the sick piece, we need now to bend at all, at all three uh, levels, ankles, knees, hips, and I'm, we're simply going to accelerate as fast as we can, and really the goal is to see how close to the line I can get without going over the line, you know, we always talk about feet on the white, and simply just Z and zip the feet, you know, right on the big knuckle of your toes. Okay, the same thing, same foot, same shoulder, it's staggered, you know, so if, if we have a guy that's lunging a lot, you know, that's probably because he's not bringing his hips, and that comes with the stagger. And the stagger simply is this. If this is the, the ball carrier, I'm more, I've already came to balance, right? That first phase is done. But now that, that next piece, wherever it is, and I don't care. I tell our guys, I don't care if your head is on the ball side. I don't. Because the first slide, I simply said, get the guy down. So I know that's a, that's a big coaching piece, and I know some people may agree or disagree, but in my eyes, I don't care if your head's on the ball side or not. So if I get to this approach, and we have a lot of guys that only stagger with their left foot, they're comfortable with that. We have guys that can do both, we have guys that only do right. But now I've came to balance, and the next is just going to be heel-toe relationship, and I'm more comfortable with my left, and I'm just going to slide that left foot up. I'm going to pick it up and put it down, and as I'm coming to balance, it's a natural transition, and this will be the second phase in that drill, where I'm coming to balance, coming to balance, coming to balance, and I just have a stagger now. And what we're talking about in that stagger, obviously same foot, same shoulder. So my left foot is now forward. I hope our guys aren't doing this now, okay? Because we want to have a good, good posture. We want to have as much power coming from the ground as possible, and that comes from your cleans, comes from your front squats, and everything else. I know you guys are doing. And obviously the strike point, right? I mean, doesn't really happen for us. But when I tell, when I say the form tackle is a lost art, it's very rare unless you're getting ISO or some type of in, inside the tackle run game where you have to run right through the guy. I'm coming to balance, I have my stagger. All I want to do is have violent uppercuts, bring my hips, run it through, grab cloth and bring the guy down. And it's as simple as that, and in our eyes, and I have some film for it, but in our eyes, it works and it's 
Got it on. Thanks. So coming to balance, right? Just some of the things we're talking about. Before contact, you got to be under control. We, I mean, even at our level, right? We're doing three. I mean, we're not, we're not playing with the same guys Wisconsin playing with. So this is a big piece to. I mean, this is why we do those simple drills, and I'll, I'll show them a little bit later in the presentation. But from our standpoint, this is going to make or break your tackle. You being under control. Right? And that's the biggest thing is now, if you're running control, I feel like now in everything, in the option game, we'll talk about that later, but if you're running control, you have a chance to make a play. So shorten your stride to adjust uh, for change of direction, right? I mean, with all the zone schemes and the cutbacks, we need now, if this is the ball carrier, whoever it is, we need to just make sure, one, we're running control and we're shortening our strides. I think that happens now when you come to balance and you're zitting your feet. And you guys may have a different buzzword for that, I don't know, but. Our eyes, it's easy. So I can simply say to Zach, and I keep bringing Zach's name up because he's been one of the best linebackers we've had in the last couple of years, but hey, sink was good, but you didn't shorten your stride. So now in that first drill, if he's starting to run, 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 and he now goes over the line, in my eyes, those strides need to be a little bit shorter, right? And we don't ever give him, hey, it needs to be six inches or five and a half inches because on the football field, that's tough to, to measure out. So sink your hips, right? Lower your center of gravity. I think that's self-explanatory, but even with our guys, sometimes they don't understand, right? We're talking about we want knee benders, not waist benders. And I think that starts in the weight room, you know? You guys probably see it. I mean, shit, when I was in high school, I thought I could squat the world, but then you watch it on film, and I'm always squatting like this. Yeah, well, you know, that's gonna bring down four habits on Friday nights, four habits in practice, four habits on Saturday. Flatten your back for strike and power. And obviously a flat back for us is just a 45 degree angle. You know, in my eyes, this is a good football position. I hope to now be able to make a play on this ball carrier or the quarterback, whoever it is. You know, opposed to, like I said, being a weight bender and truly having a flat back. And you'd be surprised, we have some smart kids, but when I say flat back, we got some old, I mean, some D linemen, you know, that think they're on a stance, you know? And, and, and I know you have to explain that and probably your level the same deal you know, and even in the NFL, I mean, you see a lot of guys lunging. And I think now that just talks about, hey, if I have a flat back at a 45, opposed to now I'm bending on my waist, well, hey, you can't hit what you can't see, right? It's the first thing I learned in Pop Warner. Probably the same thing with you guys as well. Hey, keep your head and eyes up, right? And I think this is the process and this is the progression that we use. And I think that's important. You know, I, I don't know if you guys do this, but we don't just throw guys in there and say, hey, we're tackling today. And spring ball and... You know, coach can attest to this. I mean, we don't have any pads. It's awful. Lost the vote by 12 votes. Those are probably the idiots that don't even have football at their college. You know, but those guys voted that we shouldn't have pads. Well, spring ball in our eyes isn't always about scheme. It's about getting the fundamentals. And this is the number one for us on the defense. Right? We've got to bring the ball carrier down. You know, hey, if it's a 55-yard game, we still got to bring the dude down. It doesn't matter. And obviously, you know, our, our philosophy, we want to give up three, not six. So talking about the stagger, right? Pretty simple, right? My right leg's up, right shoulder should make contact. My left leg's up, left shoulder should make contact. You know, firm side, right? And I think that starts to get into how you play defense. And this is, you know, what we talk, we were talking about the firm side and the free side. You know, if I'm the left defensive end, I'm probably gonna make a tackle more likely if the play's away with my right leg. You know, only because now he understands he's a box player or a skill player, depending on what defense we're in. And all I mean it by that is, hey, my outside arm leg free. This is the firm side in his eyes. He understands that. So Austin Prusher from from Wanakee or some of the other guys we have, you know, I said, hey, you know, your firm side what happened? And this goes into everything, right? Staying square and vice versa to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Any question on this? Like I said, I'm. I'm going to just talk fast unless someone stops me, so we're good for attention. Right, and accelerate. So I, I think this is the biggest piece. You know, drive off the front foot. And I, I think some people look at that, well, you know, drive off the front foot. Well, if there, and everything we do, and, and our strength and conditioning coach does a great job of this, you know, when we work this stuff in the offseason in the weight room, but I think that's extremely important. If I'm here and I'm driving off the front foot, Hopefully and naturally, the shoulder will come with it. Okay? The shoulder will come with it. Opposed to now, if I'm driving off the back foot, 
And now maybe my body turns. So lift, roll hips, and run through contact. You know, when we have the one-man sled and probably just like the rest of you, I mean, where we're going to simply just square it up and I'm just going to give a command, sink, and they're bouncing their feet, they're keeping their feet hot, stagger, we'll do the first time on the left, and then strike. And, and I, I want them, as, they're, as they have violent uppercuts, I want them to bring their knees up. Over-exaggerate the knee drop. So I think on Saturdays, for us, when the bullets are flying, muscle memory has said to them, hey, when I make contact, my knees are always moving. And this isn't everything, not just tackling, but shedding a block and vice versa. Grabbing on the tackle and shedding a block. Obviously, everything involves feet, right? And this is a ground-based game. That's why we do and we have, uh, you know, the strength program the way it is. You know, I laugh when the baseball team's in there working out the same time as our guys. I, I only say that because they have a lot more guys than us sometimes in our weight groups, but they never go to the platforms. <laughs> I die when I see that, but you know, for us, that's extremely important. Everything we do, you know, is with Olympic lifts. You know, everything we do is on is on our feet. And keep your head and eyes up, right? And I think that's again self-explanatory type of stuff. But obviously, this is for safety, and this is the biggest thing, right? I know it's cliche to say, but you know, the game's under attack a little bit. I know probably at the high school level more than college, you guys have parents all the time. You know, we had a recruit up yesterday had a parent tell me, well. What do you do to prevent concussions? Oh, shit. Uh, well, we try to teach tackling the right way. But even our best kids, like Zach Larkowski, you know, he had, he had two concussions this year. Because Zach's a little bit different, right? Zach just, he was like a kamikaze. So even our best players who do the things right 90% of the time, still, it's that one hit, right? So just things to think about, and I guess why we're teaching what we're teaching. And this talks a little bit more about the same standard and strike. So, right, so in, for what it's worth, I know everyone has a different approach to it, but uh, I can't stress this enough. I think buzzwords are the best thing for you. I didn't have a chance to see Coach uh, talk about D-line play, but I, I'm assuming you have some buzzwords, right? I mean, just things that are easy so you can be fast, right? And I think everything, not just on the field, but your practice. I mean, the two and a half hour practices are over, at least in our eyes, right? I mean, that's just a lot of time, a lot of wasted time. So. You know, we just need to be able to communicate fast, okay? And obviously the same, we sort of talked about this, you know, head up with your eyes under the ball carrier's chin. You know, and that's a true form tackle. You know, it's really the angle and the profile tackle, which I'll talk about next, that we're really concentrating on. Because really, the only guy that will make a form tackle are our two inside linebackers. You know, we're three, four personnel most of the game. So those are the guys that if we get ISO, or maybe a counter scheme that's inside of the tackle, he may have a chance to truly wrap this guy up like we worked and like I just talked about with violent uppercuts, okay, hot feet, driving those knees, rolling the hips into it. Okay, the stag is the same thing that we talked about. You know, I think on the bottom there, and another buzzword we say is we were talking about vicing, right? And these, these terms are not just for defense, they're for special teams as well. You know, I, being a Division three coach, I have the uh, awesome responsibility of you know being a man of many hats. So I run our KOR unit, I run our punt return unit, I'm the video coordinator. Coach probably knows how that goes. I mean, you do a lot of stuff. So you know we need to make this simple. And these terms aren't just for our defensive guys. You know they're for our offensive guys as well. You know especially the word vice. Right? We want to take half the man away. And I think when you think about that, it's like well you know well, again self-explanatory. Right? We want to take half the man away. Work him to the boundary. You want to take half the man away because you're a box player and you have a, you, you know, you have your extra bonus player in the run game. But I think that's important, right? And we're always trying to key the hip, right? For us, that that never lies to us. So the, the hip is always something that we're trying to keep. So when we're getting into our stagger, we're trying to take a half man, opposed to when we work it the first day, we're just trying to split the crotch. This is more now our, our foot that we're staggering needs to go to that near number. So if anything else, we're not going to get the cut back to us you know, if anything else, we're just going to be able to wrap him up at an angle, and we'll talk about that angle tackle in a minute, and then we'll be able to get him down, which is the number one goal for us. And the strike, you know, we're just trying to pull him down on the ground, right? We're just trying to get him down. So the angle tackle profile tackle for us is the number one, right? Everything we do in, in, in our game, and probably the same thing with you guys, right, is 
is this angle tapping. I mean, this, this is how, this is just it. With zone schemes, whatever the case may be, everything now is going to be at an angle. You know, how we teach our linebackers, you know, we don't really cross over anything. You know, we don't ever want to cross the midline of our body. So our linebackers, our inside linebackers are constantly step for play, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. So we're always trying to stay square. Well, we don't see a lot of ISO, so we're not ever going to get the form tackle. So those angle tackles are important. And this is just obviously from a side, we're just trying to take half man away. And opposed to aiming right in the front, where now this guy has a two-way go. This guy has a two-way go. And I know, again, self-explanatory, but um, we're just trying to eliminate the chances of the cutback. Because if that guy is your bonus player and you're, and you're you know, sort of the guy you're hoping to make the tackle based on your scheme, you better hope that guy gets him down. Because if not, you're going to have a corner running, running down a running back. You know, chances are those don't always go the best way. But again, same stagger strike is everything we're talking about. But now it's just at an angle. So this ball carrier is turned, and I'm this inside linebacker or safety or whoever is in the box for you to make this play. We're shuffle, shuffle. We're still coming to balance. We're still banging our knees, right? We're, we're zitting our feet. And now the stagger, the strike, the run through is all the same. This helps us a little bit more because our momentum and just that angle is a little bit easier now just to, and we'll talk about a roll tackle, which is what we really teach more than anything else. But now it's much easier for us to come here, roll it up, keep our feet hot, and vice versa. So I have some coaching points, right? Just deliver the blow, you know, run through, you know, just the things we're constantly trying to say, keep it simple, stupid type of deal. You know, because even our guys, but we have some pre-med guys at 395. If you explain a lot of things to them, sometimes it doesn't go, uh, it doesn't stay in their brain, it goes in one ear, one ear, goes in one ear, comes out the other. So just the things I'm going to talk about today, this is just our circuit, so, you know, I don't know how you guys are teaching and tackling, you know, this works for us, this is a pre-practice circuit we do almost every day, every day. You know, even in spring ball, we're going to do this every day. You know, in spring ball, obviously, we're not trying to bang as much, and we're really not trying to bang in pre-practice at all either. But our guys know right away, these are what, this is what we call it. You can call it whatever you want. But our guys know right away when they go to the circle with Coach Glomsky, our safeties coach, he's always doing the multiple fits. They always know that. But if a kid doesn't know, Coach, what are we doing? Multiple fits. Okay, so he knows right away what multiple fits is. Same thing with two-way go, roll, tap, and bring that the whole deal. So form it up, right? And this is this can be done many ways. Obviously, we do five lines. Five lines for us works, right? We're having 50 defensive guys, I and mean, it just works for us. And the commands are simple: sink, stagger, strike. If you have smaller guys, and I don't know how many of you guys have split offense and defense practice based on the day. I don't know if that's most of you or some of you. If you have two-way starters or not, this may be a little bit harder. You know, if it's an offense and emphasis day, well, you might only have 10 guys. You might just want to use a one-man bat. You know, we do that as well too. You know, and just cut some more coaching points. You know, we're trying to focus on the numbers. I don't have this drill videotaped, but I have a very similar drill. We're just going one-on-one -on -one and working form tackle. So on contact, you grab cloths, eyes to the sky, chest to chest. Our guys get this. When I say, hey, PP to PP, they, they know what I'm talking about. You know, and I know it's, it's very childish. There's no question about it. You know, but our guys know right away from a form tackle standpoint, you know, I go, hey, you know, they dip the dip, man. You know, they know right away that, hey, maybe they were at the wrong angle in this drill that we need to really be chest to chest and vice versa. Next slide. So multiple fits, right? Some guys call this machine gun, eye opener. There's a lot of different names for this. And all this is going to be is that ball carrier is going to have a chance. The first time we go through it, he enters each bag. So we're just tr trying to constantly, and this is really a linebacker drill in my eyes more than anything. So our linebackers do this, and we'll have this circuit more than anyone else. But in our eyes, we're just trying to get the muscle memory going. You know, and, and obviously you hear that a lot. We're, we're just trying to get these guys to constantly go. Constantly go. You know, keep rep, rep, rep. And I know you guys are probably the same way. You know, and it's everything we've talked about on the previous slides, slides with sink, stack, strike. And this is a true form tackle, you know, for an ISO player, a counter player, or even power. You know, just with some of the things that we're seeing. Any questions on this? This one's big for us. 
You know, uh, we, we happen to share our, um, we share our field with our, obviously our uh, track team. You know, they got the huge pole vaulting bats, right? Or some of you guys might have, might have crash mats. Well, for us, we do this in two different ways, right? We'll have the, the ball carrier simply pick a, a cone. Pick a side he's going to run to, and that's going to be an angle tackle. But we're also, we're also going to work, hey, they're on the half yard line about to score. Our linebackers are starting to creep up. And this one will be a little bit more bang. We don't do this as much. This is more of a preseason deal. But I think, if anything else, if, if you get anything out of this, I, I think it's important to simulate reality for these guys. That's why after camp, we never ever do the form fit drill. We just don't do it. But we teach it because it's a progression. It's the first step in our, in our tackling progression. With this goal line angle, our, I know the fullbacks love it on our team. They, they fucking love it because they usually whoop our ass. Um, but you know, the running backs do not like it. The quarterbacks do not like it. And yes, the quarterbacks do this. Now, if you got one guy and he's your only guy, I wouldn't put him in. But you know, we have five guys. You know, and I mean, if quarterbacks need, that's the one thing you got to work on. I mean, you know, obviously, you have the offensive line push, which this is not simulating that. But they still need to know how to get hit. You know, they still need to know how to take a hit with the ball in their hand. And obviously the coaching points just the same thing. Six dagger strike, just the things we're constantly trying to pre-show our guys and we're hoping by the first game, you know, when we play, when we play Carthage this year, you know, it's just ingrained in their brain. Two-way go, we don't do this a lot either because we're always trying to work, like I said, the half man. But from our standpoint, you know, this is more of a secondary drill. Because they're going to be the guys that are going to make plays in open space. So if they happen to take the wrong angle on this ball carrier, and there's no one else around them, and they're sort of that home run stopper, well, we're going to just simply preach everything we have, and that's come to balance, same leg, same shoulder, and ultimately accelerate and just get the guy down. And this is where roll tackle for us has been effective from our secondary uh, you know, I say that, and then our, one of our corners had two separated shoulders, so it didn't work out for him that well. Um, but in general, this is something that we're going to work with the secondary, and it's simply going to be, this is the ball carrier, we're going to start about seven, eight yards. You know, we're always talking about closing the distance down. You know, we've got to make this guy make a decision. It's not, up to, not really up to us to make a decision. We have to have this guy make a decision, the ball carrier. Running back, wide receiver, whatever it is. Have him make a decision and then react off what he does. So if he starts to juke, I mean, I'm keying the hip, I'm, I'm closing the distance down, small strides, I'm just zit, zit, zit. He makes a decision to my right, okay, boom. I'm accelerating through, I'm snatching it close, and I'm rolling. Next one. Do, do you have a preferred way to roll? To the yes. Inside, pull inside? Yeah, with, <coughs> this one right here, yeah, but oh, there is. from our standpoint, we want to just, we want to roll the direction we're going, just from a momentum standpoint. So how we always do this, and the film I have, um, shows us after the progression is already done, but we'll simply start on two knees and have you know just an agility bag here. You, you don't have agility bag, do you? Uh, I'm not here. Come no, on. okay, no worries. I'll roll with this. Uh, so from our standpoint, we're simply just going to work. You know, we have a good posture, good chest. Okay, our commands are simple, right? We're accelerating through. Well, that's eliminated. We've already closed the distance down from the ball carrier. Okay, we're going to leave your feet. Obviously, we don't want to do that here. We're on our knees. Okay, but we're going to snatch two. We're going to pull two. And we have sandbags that we work this on as well. Just 25 pounds. I know, you know we have a lot of construction guys on, you know, with dads, and you know, somehow we have 10 of them. And we're always working just to pull two. Pull two because you're not going to really get anything from an uh, agility bag. But I'm simply going to snatch it to my body. I don't want any separation. So as I'm leaving my feet and I'm starting to grab, I need to pull. And as I'm going now, because this ball carrier is going to my right, it's just natural. It's natural. Now, is this the best tackle if it's third and five, you get him after he's already pushed three yards? Well, no, he still may roll to the first down. You just never know what can happen there. But it's just the mindset that it's much easier to do this and roll versus snatching it to your body. His momentum's going that way, your momentum's going that way, and thinking that you're strong enough to do this. Just probably won't happen. That's just. You know, from us doing it, obviously from you know, the places we went to visit about this. I know a lot of you guys have probably seen, uh, you know, the Pete Carroll videos, the Hawk tackling, and uh, 
We watched that a lot. We were we spent like an hour watching it. What pieces can we take? Well, they talk about target points and strike points. Well, you got to think that's a much different game than we're playing, and it's really a much different game than you guys are playing. Only reason I say that is because if you hit a, run, a, a quarterback too low, they're flagging you, right? You hit someone too high, possibility of what helmet helmet contact, they're throwing a flag on you. Okay, so they talk about I think sternum to right above the knees is their target point. You know. Well, I mean, ideally that's where you want to grab, you want to grab right above the knees, you know, right, right at the back of the knee and be able to snatch it through, well, and you, you'll see the drill, but we simply, are, I mean, we are leaving our feet. So to just, to give them a target point, and if they don't, and we grade on tackling, if they don't hit that target point, they get them out on the ankles, then you get them down, and that's our number one. So, just some things to talk about from there, I mean, for what it's worth. Any questions on any of that stuff, guys?